Amen. You may be seated. Open up your Bibles. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Hebrews 11.1. 1. I'm reading in the New King James. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Again, now faith is the substance of of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. What is a substance? A substance is something that you could build with. So faith is the building material for your hope. How many of you have hope? A desire, an expectation, a wanting. How many of you have hope for tomorrow? Hope for today? How many have hope for your family salvation? Hope for your community. Faith is the building material so that you can see your hopes come to pass. Amen. So faith is faith is needed for the hopes to come to pass, but you don't start off with faith, you start off with hope. What do you desire? What do you want? What do you what do you what do you need? There's some people, they look at the end of their money and they, they feel so desperate. I don't have any money. Put your hope in the Lord. He's your source and your supply. Amen. And the moment a person begins to put their hope in Jesus, then the word of God becomes truth in their life and they begin to claim that word as a foundation, as a as, a way that they could believe God so they could receive the end of their hope. If someone is sick, they could grab a hold of the healing power of Jesus Christ in Isaiah 53, 5, that by his stripes, we are healed. They hope to be healed, but because of the word of God, they have faith in God's word that their hope of healing shall manifest. And so we don't start off with faith. We start off with hope. You know, you need, you need to know what you want to build before you can grab a hold of the substance to build it. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Amen? Are you with me? Amen? Hope is a, a feeling of expectation and desire for certain things to happen. The greatest need of man is hope. That's the greatest need of man. When a man doesn't have hope, a man loses all reason for living. Many times a man will face or woman will face a, a dire circumstance in their life and immediately they go into a place of, of depression, of fear. They lose all hope in tomorrow because of the situation that they're going through and they make, they make terrible decisions because of mo momentary problems. It's not because of the problem was so big. It's because the hope that they had for tomorrow had been stolen. So they feel like they should not live. They feel like they, they, there's no reason to life. They feel like the pain that they're, they're going through is so deep that, that there's, there's no reason to live. If, if life is all about pain, why should I live or exist one moment longer? And when they look at their past, they grew up in pain. They've, they've been abused by people. Society has, has done things to them that have hurt them. Relationships that should have worked out where the trust was broken. They've been abused. They've been neglected. They've been everything that imaginable because that's what the enemy does. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy and has left a, 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 has left death everywhere he has touched. And so that person, when they look at their past life, yeah, they might have had momentary moments, but mostly they could say, it's all been about pain. Why do I even exist if my whole life has been about pain? They have no hope for tomorrow because yesterday has been hell. And so they get to a place where I just want to quit. I want to give it up. I want to die because if, if there is a hell, this is it. impossible to live without hope. 
It's impossible to live without hope. What oxygen is to the lungs, such as hope to the meaning of life. When people lose hope, the will to live is taken from them. And you might even say, well, pastor, you know, I, I've had an okay life. But man, things around us don't look too good. Bible talks about the end times. Wars, rumors of wars, plagues, pestilences. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Men will become lovers of themselves. They'll be creative. And wake. They, will, they will think of new ways to sin. We, we live in a, in a generation that, that the Word of God talks about that they will, they will call good, bad, and bad, good. They can't even answer a question. Are you a man or a woman? They can't even ask, answer that question. It's, it's somehow that's controversial. I think the question they should ask them, are you alive or are you dead? Because the way people think today, I mean, why? But that's the enemy. That's the devil. It's not them. It's the, it's the, it's the, it's the, the devil that has come to steal, kill, and destroy. And what is he doing? He's trying to steal, kill, and destroy all hope in humanity. People want to, they want to isolate themselves. One of the biggest problems that companies have right now is nobody wants to come into work. Everybody wants to work at home. Why? Because they don't like one another. They would rather see them from a screen rather than have to see them in real life. So they have no hope in their brother. They have no hope in their sister. They have no hope in brother in, 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 in man. They have no hope in government. They have no hope in their family. Everything that could be shaken has been shaken. Everything that could hurt has been causing pain. And they lost all the will to live. And we live in a society that, that there's a war and we don't even know why they're fighting. We don't even know why they're fighting. Is it money? Is it pride? Is it what is it? What are you fighting for? Are you with me today? So we've lost all hope. The world has lost all hope. People are dying. Matter of fact, I started thinking about the war and people that are so desperate to, to fight. The only reason that they want to fight now is because they're so angry and they're so uh, bitter about what has happened to them that they want to hurt those that have hurt them. And after you do that, what do you live for? After you've gotten your revenge, what are you living for? What do you hope for? When everything has been destroyed, when everything in life has been about pain, when everything that, that you thought you could lose has been taken away from you, what do you live for? And we wonder why suicide rates are climbing. We wonder why, why, why the United States has the greatest level of drug addictions. Why people are, 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 are so addicted to drugs. Literally, the United States funds the entire addiction, drug addiction industry of the world everybody's medicated because they're trying to not live they want to forget their problems they want to forget their situation so they'll do it in the bottom of a bottle they'll do it at the bottom of a of, of a of a of pills they'll, they'll take pills they'll, they'll they'll do everything they can to forget who they are because who they are they don't want to be they don't want to live they don't want to breathe they don't want to last not one moment longer can we just end this misery because on the other side at least i'm not hurting no more that's where they're at i told you you're gonna need the holy ghost I came, I came back with something for you. Amen. Tell your neighbor it's going to get better. <laughs> Amen. You know that there, there's, there's nuclear, um, there's submarines that Russia has. One submarine... I believe it holds up to 120 nuclear bombs, one submarine. One submarine has enough to destroy pretty much the entire United States and, and then some. They, man has become very creative in destruction. 
And now there's a new technology, it's hypersound. I think it goes five times, it, the missiles that travel five times faster than the speed of sound. That is so fast that these missiles can hit any target in the world in less than one hour. In less than one hour. The Bible talks about this, you know, in the end times, travel will be, be rampant. And knowledge will be, be everywhere. If you don't think this is the last times, you know, I don't know what you're waiting for. Amen. Where is our hope? Where is our hope? Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. If anybody turned the channel by now. <laughs> it's... It, it's not going to be good for them. <laughs> like, wow, pastor, I turned on TV to be inspired, and now I've been depressed. I got some good news for you, amen? Look at your neighbor and say, I got some good news for you. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning verse 1. I'm reading New Living Translation. It says, let me now remind you, dear brothers and sisters, of the good news. I preached to you before, you welcomed it then, and you still stand firm in it. It is this good news that saves you if you continue to believe the message I told you. Unless, of course, you believe something that was never true in the first place. I passed on to you what was most important and what had also been passed on to me. Christ died for our sins, just as the scripture said, he was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scripture said. Now, if you will continue reading on that scripture, it will talk about all the evidence of Jesus Christ dying on the cross, buried in a grave, and three days later, he rose again. It will talk about all the evidence that over 500 people saw Jesus alive. Not only did these 500 people saw Jesus alive, but they were still alive amongst them testifying about their counter. Not when Jesus before the cross, but Jesus after the cross rising from the dead. Jesus is not dead. He's alive. The grave could not hold him. He, he died as a son of God carrying the sins of man. He was buried in the grave three days, but he rose again. He is alive. He was resurrected from the dead. Amen. Say, Jesus is alive. He is the resurrection from the dead. That is where our hope is. Our hope is in the resurrection from the dead. You have to understand that term. Resurrection from the dead. Jesus is not dead in the grave. He's alive. He rose from the dead. He walked amongst us. He prayed and prepared the body, and then he rose again. When he rose again, the disciples looked at him, and they watched him rise to the, to the air. They kept on watching. They didn't give up. They kept on watching, even though he was gone. He was in heaven. He rose to heaven. They stayed there watching, waiting for him so long that an angel had to show up. And tell them, Jesus is no longer with you right now. The same way you saw him go up is the same way he's coming again. Amen. Say resurrection. These, these events are truths backed by many witnesses. Christians, let me just tell you about resurrection. You cannot be a Christian unless you believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There are men, when, when the people welcomed Jesus and they, they took their garments and they put it on the ground and they took branches and, and, and leaves and they put it in, and he rode in on the donkey, they cried out, Hosanna, Hosanna. But in the scripture, they said that he is a prophet. They were welcoming a prophet of God. They didn't realize that they were actually welcoming a king of kings and the Lord of lords. You cannot be a Christian unless you believe in the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. We believe 
in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We put our hope in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So we live by faith in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because him rising from the dead is also we rising from the dead with him. Go with me to verse 12. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 12. I'm going to read all the way through verse 26. But tell me this, since we preach that Christ rose from the dead, why are some of you saying there will be no resurrection from, of the dead? For if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, then all our preaching is useless and our faith is useless. And we apostles would all be lying about God, for we have said that God raised Christ from the grave. But that can't be true if there is no resurrection of the dead. And if there's no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is useless and you still, you are still guilty of your sins. In that case, all who have died believing in Christ are lost. And if our hope in Christ is only for this life, we are more to be pitied than anyone in the world. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. He is the first of a great harvest of all who have died. So you see, just as death came into the world through man, they're talking about Adam, now the resurrection from the dead has begun through another man, Jesus Christ. Just as everyone dies because we belong, we all belong to Adam, everyone who belongs to Christ will be given a new life. But there is an order to this resurrection. Christ was raised as the first of the harvest. Then all who belong to Christ will be raised when he comes back. After that, the end will come when he will turn the kingdom over to God the Father, having destroyed every ruler and authority and power. For Christ must reign until he humbles all his enemies beneath his feet. And the last enemy to be destroyed is death. Jesus took it all to the cross. All the sin, the shame, the guilt. He died on the cross. Carrying your sins and my sins. The curse of man. The curse because of what Adam and Eve did of eating of the tree of knowledge. He took it all to the cross. He died. But the curse could not keep him in the grave. It stayed dead, buried in the grave. Your sins are dead. Your sicknesses are dead. Your shame is dead. Your guilt is dead. The old life is dead in the grave. But Jesus rose from the dead to a new life and that everyone that believes in him becomes together with Christ Jesus, no longer dead, but alive in Christ. The Bible says he's the head. We are the body. We are one with Christ. Amen. Everybody hold up one finger. We are one with Christ. Make sure you're holding the right one. Amen. We are one with Christ. We are one with Christ. Not separate, we're one with Christ. His victory is my victory. His death was my death, but his resurrection is now my resurrection as well. So death has no more sting. Death has no more authority over me because Jesus has defeated death at the cross of Calvary. He's not dead, he's alive. He rose from the dead. Everybody say, Jesus has, rose, has risen from the dead. That's the resurrection power. When I see Jesus and what he done for me, I could claim his victory as my victory. I am not addicted. I am free in Jesus name because Jesus has raised me from the dead. Sin is still in the grave. It has no power over me. Say sin has no more power over me. Why? Because Jesus didn't raise the sin that was holding me. He raised me with him, but he didn't raise the sin that was holding me. 
So sin is now dead, buried in the grave. The only power that sin has over you is the power that you give it. You are not bound, you are free. Death has no more control over you. Amen? Say, I'm alive in Christ Jesus. We've been raised together with Christ into new life and every curse has been broken off of you. Some people say, Pastor, pray for me, I'm cursed. You're not cursed, you're blessed. But Pastor, I got this, hold on, hold on me. You have power over that, command it to stop and it will listen to you in the name of Jesus. Because of what Jesus has done, curses are broken. Sin no longer has any control over you, amen? The Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. The same power that raised Christ from the dead now dwells and lives on the inside of you. For you to look at yourself as someone that's defeated, as someone that's overcome, no, 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 no. You got to begin to change the way you see yourself. Stop looking at yourself as someone that's dead in the grave. Start rising up and being one with Christ Jesus and command those things to stop in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. You're not resisting in your power and your strength. You're resisting him in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the resurrected Savior. The devil might have defeated you, but it will not defeat the Christ that's inside of you. You speak from a different place of authority and power, not as someone dead, buried in a grave, as someone that's been made alive in Christ Jesus. The resurrection power of Christ is in you. You're not dead, you're alive in Christ Jesus. So we have this hope in the resurrection of the dead. That all who have died in Christ will rise again. The Bible commands us when we lose one of our loved ones, a brother, a father, husband, wife, someone that died in Christ Jesus. They're not dead. They're asleep. Amen. Look at your neighbor say they're not dead. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51, it says, But let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not all die, but we will all be transformed. It will happen in the moment, in the blink of an eye, when the last trumpet is blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to live forever. And we who are living will also be transformed. I want to give you an order of things. I'm not going to teach you too much on this. I know you would want to know though, uh, because this is, I want to give you an order of things of the end. Let me talk about the end for a moment. Um, someone says, Pastor, when is the end of the world? Well, something could happen where you're no longer living. It's the end of your world. Amen. Uh, I want to live forever. You can live forever with Christ, but not in that body. Your body has a time limit. Amen. Hallelujah. The word of God says you can live up to 120 years. Amen. I don't know if I want to live up to 120 years. Amen. The food is good, but it's better in heaven. Amen. Amen. There is a day where your body is going to end and you're going to receive a glorified body. Every one of us has appointed date unto death in this physical body. It's not the death of you. It's the death of the body. And the Bible says we get a glorified body. If you think I'm handsome now, just wait. Just wait. I'm telling you. You find everything in Jesus. I'm no longer bitter and angry because of what the world tries to do towards me. Because it doesn't matter what they try to do to me. Because the greater one is living on the inside of me. That whatever they might try to do to me, they cannot touch the Christ that's living on the inside of me. So it might be tough. I might go through, the, through a storm. I might be going through a trial. But it's not going to overcome me because the greater one is living on the inside of me. Look at your neighbor and say, I can't die. Death no longer has any power over you. 
When you recognize that you already died a long time ago when you gave your life to Jesus, you're not trying to save your life, you're trying to give it away. When you live for Christ and he becomes your heart, and everything that you live for is for him. It's not about trying to save, you know, something and trying to protect yourself. It's about trying to live for him and do everything that he's called you to do. Overwhelming victory is mine. I'm a pastor. I, I, one of the, the things that the Lord has me do is I, I have the privilege of being able to do funerals when people have passed away and they go on from this life to the next and there's a memorial and the families get together and but when I know that they've been they're saved I know that they're in the presence of the Lord the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord I don't feel sad for them I feel sad for for me he's with Jesus I love Jesus so much. I love Jesus so much. He's been so good to us. I love him. My father would talk about heaven. He would say, when I get to heaven, I'm going to find two palm trees and put a hammock <laughs> on a beach. And I'm just going to enjoy Jesus for the rest of eternity. When he died, all I could see is him on a hammock on the beach with Jesus. <laughs> I don't know what, but, but I don't I don't have a hammock dream. <laughs> but I can tell you this: I love Jesus so much. I love you very, very much but I love Jesus more. That's why in this life, it doesn't matter what people threaten me with or, or say about me or accuse me. None of that matters. I know where my heart is. I know where my home is. It doesn't matter what suffering I might have to go through. I know who my faith and my hope is in. So in spite of whatever the world tries to throw at me, to cause me to lose hope. My hope is not in this world. My hope is in the Lord. So it doesn't matter what kind, what comes my way. I have victory in Jesus' name. I'm going to make it. I'm going to be fine. I'm, my, my, I'm not going to be crazy. If I'm going to be crazy, I'm going to be crazy for Christ. I'm not going to be overstressed. I'm not. I looked at some people that, that I grew up with and... and and my wife was saying, they look so much older than you. And I started thinking about it because I know where my peace is. Because the people that don't live for God, you carry the weight of the world on your shoulders. You're trying to answer every problem in your own strength. You're trying to come up with solutions that are not made to be answered in this realm. But when you walk by faith and not by sight, when you live for Jesus and he becomes everything to you, it doesn't matter what comes your way. It can't rob you of your joy. It can't rob you of your peace. You can celebrate in, in, in spite of what adversity you might go, you might go through. Pastor, what if, what if uh, I lose someone I love? Praise the Lord. Thank God for them. But don't allow it to rob you of the hope that you have in Jesus Christ. How many of y'all love Jesus? I love Jesus so much. I love him so much. He's everything to me. He's all that I want. He's all that I need. He's all that I desire. The only reason I'm here is because Jesus told me to come here and to speak to you today because he loves you. He loves you very much. He has a plan and purpose for your life. He wants you to know who he is so that he can bring you peace and life and joy. He did it all for you. Don't you know the cross was, he, did, he went to the cross for you? The Bible says, for the joy that was set before him, he went to the cross. You were the joy. You were the joy. He went to the cross because he saw you. He saw that the only way to set you free and to give you life and to give you peace is for him to make that sacrifice for you. 
I love Jesus so much. He carried all of our shame, all, our, all the weight, the guilt, the stain, everything that you're not proud of, everything that has held you bound, everything that has, has brought pain in your life. He carried it all to the cross. And he put an end of it once and for all. He died with it. He was buried with it. But three days later, the resurrection power rose him from the dead. He's not dead. He's alive. But all those things that have caused death in your life, they're dead and buried in the grave forever. Death no longer has any control over you. Death no longer has any sting over you. There's no sin that has more power over you. There's no depth of wickedness that could keep you away from the, from the love of God. He loved you that much. That if anyone comes to him, repents, surrenders their life, the same spirit that rose him from the dead will come inside of you and will raise you into the new life in Christ Jesus. You might say, Pastor, I got a lot of problems. Put your faith in the power of God. It might be stronger than you, but it's not stronger than him. He will set you free. He did it all for you, and he did it for me. Look at your neighbor and say, Jesus loves you. Amen. He's your answer. He is your hope. He is your future. He's not dead. He's alive. There's an old song. He goes, because he lives, I could face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. My life is worth the living just because he lives. Stand up on your feet. Sing it with me. Teach me how to sing this song. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. My life is worth the living just because he lives. I want to ask you this question. Have you given your life to Jesus? All eyes closed for a moment. It all starts with your faith in God. If you want to receive the risen, resurrected Savior, the one that has broken the back of sin and death, the one that has given us victory, if you want that victory, you must be born again. You must accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. There are people that will say, I, will, I need to clean myself up to come to God. That never works. You can't clean yourself up. You can't be good enough for God. It takes you surrendering to him, and he is the one that gives you victory over the things that have held you down. He gives you victory over sin. He gives you victory over fear. He'll remove the, the thoughts of suicide off your life and he'll give you a purpose to live. It's all found in Christ Jesus. He is your all in all. But you must confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and surrender your life to God. If you'd like to give your heart to Jesus, I want to pray with you. When I count to three, I want you to lift up your right hand and we'll pray the prayer of salvation and you'll be born again. You'll be a child of God. Will you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? We accept his death as your death and his new life as your new life in him. This is a prayer that we pray. It's a confession of faith and you'll be born again. Maybe you have given your heart to God, but you've fallen away and you know you're not living for him. But today you want to repent and come back to living for God. This morning, this prayer is for you as well. If you'd like to give your life to Jesus or repent of your sins and come back to God, when I count to three, lift up your right hand and we'll pray the prayer of salvation together.
This is your moment. This is your time. When I count to three, if that's you, lift up your right hand. One, two, three. Lift it up wherever you're at. God bless you. 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 Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Praise God. Amen. The Lord has seen every hand. I want to invite you all to come to the altar. Let's come to Jesus together and let's pray together. Everyone that has lifted up your hands, come meet me here at the altar. Come. Come right now. Come right now. Hallelujah. Come out of your chair. Come. 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 Hallelujah. Church, give God a praise as they come forth. God bless you. I miss you. Come a little closer, guys. Come look. God bless you, my friend. Good to see you. Praise God. God bless you. Good to see you. Praise the Lord. Anyone else? Anyone else? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Don't let anything keep you back. This, this is the reason why we're here. This is the reason why we're here. Praise God. We're going to pray. And the resurrection power of God's going to the Spirit of God's going to come live on the inside of you. You're no longer going to be without power. You're going to have an answer. It's not going to be found in people. It's not going to be found in, in a drug or it's not going to be found in a bottle. It's going to be found in Jesus. And He's going to be found in you. So wherever you go, whatever you do, He'll be there for you. He'll give you answers. He'll help you. The Spirit of God will lead you and teach you the ways of God. This is a new beginning. Praise God. Anyone else would like to come to the altar before we pray? I'll give you 30 more seconds. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. Good to see you. Praise God. Amen. I love you guys. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Praise God. God loves you. Praise God. So I want you guys to join me in prayer. Let's talk to Jesus together. Amen. Close your eyes. Say this prayer out loud with me. Lord Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. Come inside my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. I want to live for you. I thank you for saving my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Teach me your ways. Use me for your glory. Thank you, Jesus. I believe that I'm born again. I'm, child, I'm a child of God. I am saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. He's so good. Now, I'm going to teach you something that I learned when I was a child. Whenever I had a, a difficult time, and, and I, you know, as a kid, I would run to my dad's room and my mom's room until my mom and dad got tired of me running to their room, crying. And he would, he would tell me, Kevin, if you ever have something going on and you need help, just say Jesus. One of the descriptions of Jesus is, he is light. Darkness runs when you turn on the light. It doesn't ask for permission. It just leaves when you turn on the light. And the moment you cry out to Jesus, he'll be there to help you. He'll give you answers. He'll give you peace. And he'll give you great joy. I would love to be your pastors. I would love to teach you more about the things of God. You have a whole family in Christ Jesus. Amen. And we're going to grow together. Amen. I can't, I can make you this one promise. You come, you get planted in this church. You allow us to teach you the word of God. You're going to have so much joy, so much joy, so much peace, so much life, because we're going to make sure that it's the spirit of God that's teaching you every week. Amen. Will you guys keep on coming? Amen. I would love to be your pastor. I'd love to bless you in the name of Jesus. Let me just pray over you. Close your eyes for a moment. Father, I thank you for my friends. I thank you, Lord, that you are helping them, Father God, to live a better life in you, Father God. Lord, teach them your ways. Lord, give them peace. Give them joy. 
put your word inside their heart, Father God. I bless them in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that death has been forever broken off of them, that they now have life in you, in Jesus' mighty name. Now, Spirit of God, teach them. Spirit of God, help them in all their ways, Father God. We bless them in the name of Jesus, and we thank you for their salvation. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. God bless you guys. Praise God. Y'all may be seated. I mean, Y'all can go back to your chair. I want anyone, I want to tell you, this morning as I was praying, I was feeling such a weight of glory upon my life. I know it's not for me, it's for you. If you have any pain or sickness and you need prayer, come right now to receive healing in the name of Jesus. Come to the altar now in Jesus' name. Go and sing it.
Yeah.
lift up our hands to heaven. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Come on, church. Just begin to thank him. Lord, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you praise. Thank you for healing. Thank you for setting people free. Thank you for answering prayer. Thank you for your presence, Lord. We love you, Lord. We give you glory. You are worthy of all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. Holy are you, Lord Jesus. Holy are you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What's up, my brother? Hallelujah. I miss you all. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Don't take this wrong. How many of y'all seen on TikTok the girl that would dance say, Holy Ghost activate? Vanessa, I just hear God saying, get ready, you're going to be activated. You're going to be activated. Whew. Travel. Doors open. Activation. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This is going to be a holy week for you. May the Holy Spirit visit you every day. Give you divine encounters with God. Fresh revelation from heaven. Start writing. God's going to speak to you. Tell others what the Lord is doing. Amen. And he'll give you more testimonies. He'll give you more testimonies. Amen. Praise God. Are y'all blessed? I love you. I bless you in the name of Jesus. We'll see you next time. Amen. See you on Friday. Praise God. God bless you all.